we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he together we sing everyone sing holy is the Lord God Almighty and the earth is filled with his glory and holy with his glory we stand and lift up our hands we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he together we sing sing with me and everyone sing holy is the Lord filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty and the earth is filled with his glory and holy is the lord god almighty and the earth is filled with his glory and holy is the lord god almighty and the earth is filled with his glory it's rising up all around it's the anthem of the lord's renown it's rising up all around it's the anthem of the lord's renown together we sing everyone sing holy is the lord filled with his glory and holy is the Lord God Almighty and the earth is filled with his glory and holy is the Lord God Almighty and the earth is filled with his glory and holy is the Lord God Almighty and the earth is filled with his glory cause the earth is filled with glory because your earth is filled with your glory you are glorious my king we declare your name king of kings and lord of lords we love you jesus Nothing you can do, you 
Say 
walked among your created oh Jesus you alone and I've searched the world for a love that could fill my heart but nothing compares to the wonder exactly where you're at he knows exactly what's on your life and he is bigger than all of it and I just feel if we just just declare the name of the Lord if we just open up our hearts to the majesty and the might of who the name of Jesus is all powerful all glorious we will see we will see the change we will see the difference because he's a good father and he loves us I want to ask us to sing that again just let's just sing the glory of God how great he is, holy, the earth sings out, holy, the angels cry, holy, because he's worthy of it, because he is the king of kings. You shed your blood for salvation. You shed your blood for salvation. You broke the curse for our freedom. Oh. death in the morning you come again in your glory oh Jesus you alone oh Jesus you alone holy all the earth sing Holy, all the angels cry, holy, 
heart cries out holy Jesus you like to hand over to Lee who has a, has a word for this time. As we were worshiping, I was just meditating on the fact that we call to carry the presence of God and that we call to be a blessing to the nation and we're crying out for God to change our environments and situations. And I believe a strategy that he's given us is even tomorrow as we go into our workplaces, into our offices, into our classrooms, into our factories, that we carry the presence of God and that we will declare blessing over the business that we work in. We will declare God's favor over the business, whether we're simply making coffee in the business or whether we lead the business, whether we're the teacher in the classroom or the pupil in the classroom. We will declare God's favor, God's blessing, and God's will in every environment that we will carry His presence. The Holy, Holy Spirit lives in us. He, he works through us. And it's not to, not to leave this place and leave God here. We, we go out and our lives our lives show God. And as Lee has spoken, just taking his presence to everywhere we go, where we step, there is the kingdom of God. And, and being conscious of that throughout the week and, and, and um, just, just allowing God's presence to manifest where we are um, as he works in us and through us.
Where death is just a memory and tears are no more. We'll enter in as the wedding bells ring. Your bride will come together and we'll sing your beauty. God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you for your, your uh, obedience to the Father and, and coming down and living a life and dying and resurrecting and sending the Holy Spirit. And thank you that you you did it willingly you are beautiful you are incredible we love you we love that you you are so for us and god as you redeem as you work as you do what you do may we press into you may we press into that space and and become people who redeem who, who see the best in people, who, who, who lift you up in every situation, who pray for others, who, who, who show you to the world. Jesus, may you be preeminent in us and in the world that we interfere with and we get involved with. Be blessed, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's amazing that one of the themes that was coming through as we worship is the, is the love of God. And it's the love of God that casts out fear. And so, as much as we rebuke fear, because fear can come as a spirit, um, when we welcome God and we embrace Him, um, when we have the line of Judah next to us and the rats and mice just disappear. And... Um, um, I, I, I love being part of a community that during our worship time there's this ear saying, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, we want to hear what you're saying. Specifically now, what are you saying? And would you be part of that? Uh, and so thank you, Henny, for what um, you contributed as well. 
Amen. You can open your Bibles. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 1. So if you have your Bible or your device, you can get it ready. It's actually, um, as we were singing that, that, that last song, Jesus, you're beautiful. I see your face, you're beautiful. I thought, that's actually what I'm preaching about. That's actually what it's all about. Um, I want to continue um, with faith. I want to talk about faith. And in a nutshell, faith is having a good view of Jesus. Faith is having a really clear view of what, who He is and what He's done. And so I want to encourage you with that. Last week I spoke about um, that faith is built on understanding and our thinking and our logic. So we, we gather all the information that we have. We built to make decisions like that. We built to gather everything we know about something and then faith, uh, understanding uh, leads to conviction. Then we make a decision in light of what we know. We make a decision and then we uh, commit and we live and we start to act in accordance to, to that. And faith is made complete when all those three come together. I spoke about that today. I want to talk, carry on talking about faith, but and from a different angle. I want to um, highlight that it is possible for us to suppress the truth. And so I've called it perception, deception. Do you know the analogy of if I draw a six here, and you're looking at this, what I've drawn here, and you say it's a nine, and I'm saying no, it's a six, but you say no, it's a nine. Do you get it? I haven't really drawn it on the ground. Let me do it here. So if I draw a six on here, for you it's a nine. We're looking at the same facts. But actually, we, we've got a totally different perception of what it's saying. And uh, I want to say that we are masters of deceiving ourselves. Every one of us. And you'll agree with me by the end. You'll say, no, no, not me. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a chocolate bar in there. Love, won't you give it my analogy? I do it all the time. I do, yeah, <laughs> chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah. So this chocolate bar here says uh, 2,113 kilojoules. So when I do a, a, a 40 kilometer cycle um, and, I, and that's two hours of my heart rate between uh, 140 and 160. All right? So it's, it's straight, serious exercise. Two hours. All right? 1,500 kilojoules. But you know what I do? I come home and then, you know, after you've done, done some exercise, you get a bit of the munchies. You're like, hmm, what can I eat? You know? <laughs> and I look at one of these and I arrange the facts to say that I, you know, I, I, I deceive myself. I, 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 I tell myself I've earned it. But actually, I've only done 1,500 and this is 2,000. <laughs> so she says I should give her half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while sitting on the couch. Yeah. So I want to say that we are masters at deceiving ourselves. We just want like to arrange the things so that it suits what we really want. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So Romans chapter 1, I'm going to read the passage, verse 16 to 23, um, and we'll come back and explain it a bit later. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. It is, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. That's the phrase I want us to hang on to. Who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them. For God has shown it to them. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. So, God said, so what that verse says is that it's plain to see, if you look at creation, that God is the Creator, that God, His, His eternal power and divine nature is plain to see if you look at creation. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. 
but became futile in their thinking, and their, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, and animals, and creeping things. Right, so I, w- I want to say that we are all spin doctors. We, we would say that politicians are the best spin doctors, right? We would say they are able to take something that's bad and make it look mildly bad. Politicians are able to take something that's okay and make it look marvelous, all right? But I want to say that we are exactly like that. You see, from, it is in our nature for every one of us to put our own failings in the best light and take and look at our enemy's failings at the worst, in the worst light. We soften our own sins with mild words, but our adversaries we put in the worst and we hammer them with hard words. Or worse, we see the sins of others and not the sins of ourselves. You see, when the truth hunts us down, corners us, we dodge, distort, evade, mislead, justify, and lie. And when it doesn't work to suppress the truth, we will shift blame and accuse and deflect anything to hold the truth down from having its full effect on our lives. That is how we are, the Bible says, apart from God's grace working in our life. That is how I am, apart from God's grace working in my life. That is how you are, apart from God's grace. Romans 3 verse 9 and 10 says that all of humanity is like that. That is our condition. So let's have a look at this verse 18. Um, it's, um, the key phrases I want to have a look at is, it says, Who by unrighteousness suppress the truth? What is this truth they're suppressing? It's the truth of His eternal power and divine nature. That's the truth that's been suppressed. His eternal power and His divine nature. So the Bible says that it's clear to see. If you look at creation and you're after the truth, it's clear to see that God created, that He's all-powerful, that He created everything, that He's eternal, He's uncreated, that He's self-existent, in other words, he doesn't need anything, anyone, anyone else. It means there's no need that God has that I can meet. God doesn't need me. He's self-existent. He existed for eternity before he created. And he didn't create us because there was some deficit in him to be filled up. And this we can find by looking at creation. Therefore we, therefore, we must, therefore, the reason for our existent, existence must be to display His glory rather than compete with His glory. That's a, that's a hashtagable. <laughs> the reason for our existence is not to compete with His glory, but to display His glory. Therefore, we absolutely depend on Him. He not only created me and you, but He sustains you. Every, we breathe His air. We are held by the word of His mouth. And so we absolutely depend on Him because He is our source and needs nothing from us. Therefore, we should constantly live in gratitude to what He has done and who He is. Verse 21 tells us, what our response should be to seeing his eternal, um, seeing his eternal power and his divine nature. This, this is what our response should be. It says, they didn't honor him as God or give thanks to him. That's, that's the worship response when we see God clearly. That's the, what's what happens at the moment of salvation when I see Jesus as king. And I'm living life, doing life how I want to do it. I'm making all, I'm living how I want to to live. And then I come to the realization that Jesus is creator God. He's always loved me. But he's king. He's God. And he deserves my allegiance. He deserves my absolute obedience. 
in everything in life. And at that moment, I hand the steering wheel of my life over to him. And I say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That's called Lord, what we call lordship. That's part of the beginning of our journey with Jesus. But what is this problem of us being able to be deceived, our hearts deceiving ourselves? Um, I think we masters at it, especially when it comes to chocolate. The problem is a heart problem. Let's have a look at what it says. You see, we have the ability to distort things. The, I think the ultimate, the ultimate example is addiction. You see, we create an alternative. If my problem, for example, is alcohol, I'll arrange the facts so that they don't look so bad. So when I'm becoming dependent on alcohol, I'll be telling myself, I'm okay. I've got this. I'm still in control. All right? Um, and so what am I doing? I'm suppressing, I'm, I'm, I'm overlooking some of the facts because actually my heart wants something. And so the heart has the ability to rearrange things and in a sense blind us to some things and only keep our eyes on some things because we're after something. Let me, let me explain it like this. Who's, who in the room has fell in love before? Fallen in love. Have you ever fallen in love? If you have, raise your hand. Dennis, put, come on. <laughs> You're sitting next to your wife and he's not, and he's not raising his hand. <laughs> Sorry, that was an easy, easy, cheap, cheap blow. <laughs> okay. When you are falling in love with someone, you overlook the, the things that you don't want to see because your heart wants them. You want to fall in love with them. So you just so some of the facts about them you you kind of just overlook and you choose not to shed light on it. But then all the good stuff, you like just it's just so amazing. That person is like but for example, like if you're a woman and you're looking and, and you're falling in love with a with a young guy and it's like the fact that he's still at home living with his parents, you just overlook that. The fact that he can't lead himself, you just overlook that. The fact that he hasn't saved a cent, he, he's got no clue when it comes to money, you, you, you just overlook that because actually your heart just wants. All right? But then after the relationship's over, suddenly those things are, are so clear. Am I right? All right, some of us are honest in the room. <laughs> now let me take a, just allow me a two-minute detour, social media, internet. All right, we live in an environment, remember I said, we gather the facts and we make a decision on the facts that we have, all right? So how does Google and Facebook and the internet work, all right? So for example, if I am trying to decide, is President Ramaphosa good or is he a bad president, all right? So if I start to Google, or look on Facebook's the things he's done wrong. Okay? So what does now the internet do? It will send me for the next three months everything that he's done wrong and nothing that he's done right. Okay? So now if I go on that alone, I'm deceived. Okay, I'm not against the internet. I'm not against a Facebook and all that. I use all those things. They're great tools. But I want to be very clear I'm not being deceived or manipulated because that's what's going on. Agree? Yeah. You, just, you think you know everything. I guarantee you there are people in the room who believe that COVID-19 is not a disease. Yeah, in this room now. But there are people who've died from that. But people will, there are people who believe it's, a, it's just a... a um, conspiracy theory to manipulate that's and if you get your information from the internet alone then that's all you'll get and you'll be convinced absolutely convinced because you're made to be convinced by what you see <laughs> okay getting very quiet <laughs> have some chocolate Lee says <laughs> Right, second 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, talks about this. What does this suppressing the truth do? Because it has an effect on our heart. It says, um, uh, the second part of the verse says, Because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. Therefore, God sends a strong delusion. This is talking about um, something that's going to happen towards the end of time. God sends a strong delusion so that they believe what is false. All right? Now, if I'm honest, I've believed stuff to be true and then found out later I was totally wrong. And if you're honest, most of us have had that experience. Actually, believe something. Um, but it has an effect on our heart, enabling us to distort and overlook, just like the, the guy falling in love with a girl can't see anything wrong. But then when he breaks up with her, it's like, oh my word, did I not see that? Jesus says it like this in John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. He says, The light has come into the world. The people loved the darkness rather than the light because, of their, was because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works be exposed. So Jesus says, he's talking about he came to the world, but people were doing, their deeds were evil. They had their own agenda and they, 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 they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Because of that, they didn't want to be exp come into the light because they knew that their hearts would be exposed. Subtle, so subtle. The answer to this is found Romans 1 verse 16 and 17 for I'm not ashamed of the gospel this is the good news Paul says I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed of the gospel I'm not ashamed of this good news because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes and then it says in verse 17 for in it right, the righteousness of God is revealed here's the key the righteousness of God is revealed. When we see God and Him and what He's done and His righteousness, when we see Jesus and He's beautiful, then truth is a straight line that you can see. Let's say truth is a, is a line and there's wrong and right. On the one side of it, it's right and wrong. We, by nature, want to be good. I think it's how God created us. I think by nature, you know, there's no culture. In every culture, certain things are wrong. Even people who don't believe in God. There's like a built-in mor morality, like murder. There's no culture that say, no, crack on, just murder, it's not wrong. There's no culture like that. There's a built-in stuff. And that's, that's this line. I don't even know why I was speaking about a line. The power of God is revealed in the right. The power of God, the power of the gospel, is, and it's revealed in the righteousness of God. It's in us seeing the righteousness of God. I think there's an inbuilt thing in us that wants to be righteous. But religion tries to make a plan that I can find my own righteousness. So I can look good. So I can come across, so people can perceive me as a good person. And that's what religion gets me to put this external thing on. But actually the only way to do it is to see who God is, to see who I am, and in light of that allow the power of the gospel. Because the gospel, the good news is that I can't, won't ever be righteous. Jesus has purchased righteousness for me. And because of that, I can come boldly, as Dane said earlier, into the presence of God. So... In closing, to be a people of faith, we need, to, we need to love the truth. We need to love the truth. That truth is painful. It's not nice to hear you were wrong. You got it wrong. You didn't do that as good as you should have. You messed it up. But that's sometimes the truth we need to hear. That's sometimes the truth that we need to hear so that we can actually learn, move on, mature, grow, become a better person. We can love better. I don't like the, the mirror of truth 
on me as a husband. It's uncomfortable. When my wife's trying to tell me a story, and I'm seriously on the farm somewhere in my mind, I'm like, bored. <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> that truth is painful. <laughs> she's, holding up, she's holding up the text bar now. You can't eat that because I need it for the next service. We need to love the truth. Although the truth sometimes can be painful, but the truth has to do its work on us so that we can be more like Him. Secondly, we have to realize that we're prone to deception. So underneath everything we do, there's a motive. (laughs) And if you really want to get it down to the bottom base, it's either I want glory or I'm doing it for Him and His glory. Finished. Base, 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 right underneath everything we do. I'm serious about education. Why? My glory? God's glory. Education, there's nothing wrong with it. Because education can be worship unto God, if it's done for His glory, or it can be because I want, or, or I, I'm, I'm only studying because I, my, my master is money. And I know that if I get a good job, then, I'll, then, I'll, then my, 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 my ultimate king, my ultimate lord, money, I'll, 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 that's my slave master, money. I, are you getting what I'm, what I'm saying? So we have to understand that we are able to be deceived. And it's a truth. We love that truth. We love the truth and the light. It exposes what's going on so that we can be a people of faith. Um, the way that we um, have faith is to have a clear view of Jesus. Clear view of Jesus. How do we do that? We have to see His eternal power. We have to continue. I have to keep. Remember, I said about faith. Uh, Jesus said, "Where is your faith?" And I said, "They had to go and get the faith out of their pocket and look at it again." The guys who were on. Remember, I said that last week. We have to do that with who God is. I I have to remind myself that actually He created me. He sustains me. He not only owns me, made me, put me in in life, but if He, if, because the Bible says by the word of His mouth, He sustains life. In other words, when God created, He put things in motion. Oxygen, um, gravity, etc., etc. This world that we live in, he put things in motion, cause and effect. And if he, if, he, if he had to, he can't because he's God, so he can't withdraw his word. But if he had to withdraw his word, we would implode. Nothing would be left. So his word is sustaining me. And here's the, here's the beauty of the gospel. This is the righteousness of God that we have to get our eyes on. It's like There was a time where I didn't live for God. I hated God. Before, I, I, before I, I gave my life to Him, there was a time where I, I, didn't, I, I was doing my own thing. And even then, He didn't treat me like the beloved. He treats every person. And then now there are people who, who, who hate God in this world. And the amazing thing is God treats them just like you and me. <laughs> that is the beauty of the gospel. So we have to keep our eyes on His eternal power, His divine nature, that He's holy, He's pure, He's loving, He's faithful. We have to keep uh, reminding ourselves of the power of the gospel, that despite our hostility towards Him, He loves us. Um, We have to personalize that. We We have to say, yes, God, for God so loved the world. But actually, you've got to remind yourself that God loves you. You've got to drill it down to you. Personalize it. You got to no. You've got to say, God, you did this for me. I missed the boat here. I missed the boat here. But yet you loved me and you reeled me in. And for that, I'm grateful. And so, how do we keep that? We have to maintain. Remember the response: honoring God as God. So we have to maintain that heart. All the time. The way we do that is, is what I've just said. We keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on those things. 
Um, but how do we maintain our honoring God as honoring? We have to remember who He is and what He's done. Remember that every morning I breathe His air. If He had to stop, boom, I'm, I'm done. Everything I have is from Him. <laughs> and secondly, so honoring, honoring God as God, and we have to maintain gratefulness and thankfulness for who He is and what He's done for me personally. It will change your life if you take two minutes a day, uh, two minutes a day, and you just give thanks to God for what He's done for you personally, and I'm talking about find gratefulness that you really are thankful. Don't just like say words that you've heard that's Christianese. I'm saying actually find gratefulness and give Him thanks. Two minutes a day, it will ra- radically shift your whole world. So as I've been talking. Um, I've been on about this thing of we are so easily deceived. I want to I want to say I want to challenge us. I want to close in prayer to, re- to respond because God has called us to be a people of faith. But we live in a world where there's a deception, where we're not being given all the information. We've got this way the internet works. God has chosen us to be a people of faith. We desperately need a community of faith where we can wrestle out the questions that we have, the things that we don't understand, rather than search on the internet and come to a conclusion, okay, that's what I believe. That is so dangerous. That is so dangerous. Have a conversation with a person. Have, us, have some conversations with us before you come to your conclusion and your conviction. So, let me pray. Father, we want to be those who see the light and love the light. We thank you that you came to show us how to live. You came to show us how to walk on earth Walk by faith, and that's what you did. We want to be a people of faith that are bold, courageous. We don't want to be those who are easily pushed left and right. We don't want to be those who are easily deceived. Father, where there's been deception, Father, I pray right now that your light would come and shine, that you would expose it, Lord. And Lord, where the deception's been, where our heart is after our own glory or our own fame and not yours Lord we repent right now we make that adjustment right now because we want to see clearly we don't want to be deceived by our own hearts now, Father we, we make that adjustment right now Father would you fill us with a vision of Jesus would you fill us of what you of, of such a clear view of what you've done for us personally Lord God that we would be a grateful people and a thankful people. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. And the Lord give you His peace. Have an excellent rest of your day. Have some fellowship out there. Um, and uh, stay safe. Thank you for being part of this morning. <laughs>